Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in uh, chilly, cloudy Central California. Um, I'm coming to you from my favorite coffee house, so you probably will see people walking by. It is uh, Austin's Coffee Crafters, if you're ever ripping, that's where you want to go. Sorry about the lighting, but uh, it's morning here. And uh, so you're going to see people come and go. You're going to hear noises. Sorry about that. Uh, it is what it is. So anyway, um, as I alluded to uh, in last week's video, uh, we, um, you know, I'm putting in this new patient vitals network. Um, we currently have a network provided by Philips and um, our, our hospital for whatever reason has taken the decision to uh, move from their vendor managed network to uh, a customer managed network, which means me. So I've been uh, installing some new switches in their closet. Um, let me share my screen here real quick. Share the whole thing. Hang on, bear with me. All right, there we go. So this is their existing network over here on the, uh, it's on my left anyway. Um, if they're using Cisco switches, they've got a bunch of uh, bedside monitors connected into those switches. They've got some uh, servers and uh, display stations for the nurses. And um, it's, it's a fairly extensive network. But again, they're all they're all Cisco switches, which I don't manage. So what I have installed is this mess over here. Um, and what I tried to do is uh, so right back here is my core. I have two distribution switches here that are cross connected to my two cores. And then all these edge switches here where the patient bedside monitors will plug into the display stations. Um, there's a wireless network that Philips will continue to manage that will plug into my switches. Um, they are cross-connected to these two distribution switches. Thought being that I can reboot either one of these for a firmware update or whatever and not affect the patient vitals network. And that worked great in theory um, until we tried to plug in some of their, shall we say, antiquated equipment. So specifically their, their wireless network. So the way it works is it has a wireless controller that might be on this switch. And the wireless APs could be on any one of my other switches. So we put them all in the same VLAN layer two. Their wireless controller acts as a DHCP server, actually boot P, but we'll say DHCP. And it, so it gives, the, uh, it gives out the IP addresses for all those APs. What we were seeing was that the AP would not get an IP address. Why, if I put my laptop on there and assign myself an IP address, I can ping their control or I can ping anything else on that network. The APs were just not able to get an IP address. So we ran Wireshark. We saw the AP broadcasting for an IP address. DHCP was it request. Sorry, I don't know all the DHCP things, but I know how it works. So the, the client was sending out the, the uh, request. The wireless controller was uh, responding with the offer, but then the AP would never respond after that. Dead silence. So for two or three days, we racked our brains over that, could not find anything. And then finally, I don't know why, I had the idea to, okay, maybe the offer is coming out this way and the client's saying that I'm taking this IP address, and sending its ACK is coming out this way and it's confusing the APs and it's confusing the, the wireless controller uh, because it's taking a diff different path coming in this way going out this way so all right well then I'm just going to go ahead and disable this interface so there's only one way to get out to any of the other switches and I also did the same on the switch that the wireless controller was on let's, let's disable that second interface so basically all, this, all these edge switches here were only connected to that distribution switch. When we did that, boom, DHCP started working right out of the gate. So, okay, that's good. We've got a workaround. We know how to get all their uh, APs connected, but what happens when I re-enable all these secondary interfaces and bring this, you know, we got 
we've got both these switches going. But then what? So, uh, oops, sorry about that. It thinks that I want to know something and I don't. Get those windows out of the way. So we said, all right, let's try it. So we're going to turn these these secondary interfaces all back on with you know this one, this one, this one. We turn all those back on and reboot the AP. It works. So I said, all right, well, let's let's try something else. Let's uh, let's just reboot the whole switch just for giggles. Reboot the whole switch. AP still gets its IP address and ends up normally. I'm like, well, how is it? Why is it working now? And that's when the engineer tells me, oh, well, it's not getting an IP address now. What do you mean it's not getting an IP address now? <laughs> Apparently, uh, the very first time, and I mean the very first time you power up these APs, they go through the whole DHCP process, requesting an address, getting an address. That's the only time they ever do it. They never renew, <laughs> ever, ever. It's a one-shot deal. If you want them to get a different IP address, you got to blow them away, and then you got to go into the wireless controller and blow that client record away. Okay, so how much of this do I really? I mean, how much of this do I really need to uh, troubleshoot in my network? If if the only time that's ever going to be a factor is the first time you bring on an AP, I think we're just going to leave it as is, because every other device I put on there works just fine. It's literally this one device from this one vendor. So to me, not really worth the investment in troubleshooting all that to figure out why. I know there's others out there that have this insatiable curiosity and would want to know why. I don't. I just want to get it working so I can move on to the next project because there's, there's too many projects going on right now. So anyway, that, that was the... Uh, the long sad tale of, of getting the Philips devices to work. Oh, and, and then we had another set of devices, the bedside monitors. Um, the, um, well, first of all, the wireless devices, you all, you have to hard code the uh, port speeds at 100 full duplex, otherwise they won't work. The other stuff, the bedside monitors, you have to make sure it's at auto, I mean, full auto. And what they initially told me is put everything on 100 full duplex, which I did. Of course, the bedside monitors wouldn't connect. And then I had to go through and tell them, okay, where are all your bedside monitors connected? And then go through and set those to, to back to auto. And those all worked. All of that took two weeks. So anyway, that that is now the long sad tale of the Philips network and the patient vitals monitoring network that we're putting in. Um, so I'd be interested, there's, there's people out there that, uh, that dig into TCP IP far deeper than I do. If you've got some theories as to why that would have been not working, put them in the comments below. I'd really like to know why. Um, yeah, because it's just weird. So anyway, that's that. Um, what do we got coming up? We got a project to replace all my legacy switches, my C-series switches, C5s. And I think there might be still a few D2s out there. Uh, got to replace those with some newer switches. So those are theoretically arriving this past week. I didn't see them. So hopefully they'll get here this week. More than likely, they're sitting in a ship off the coast of Long Beach. But uh, they'll get here when they get here. Um, I'm not sure what else is coming up. But I think I've rambled on long enough. So. As always, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell if so desired. And as always, uh, if you need any prayers or anything like that, put it in the comments and uh, we'll see you next week. God bless. Okay, where is it? Stop that and I'm gonna stop this. <laughs>